Hello and welcome to Break Check, Rocket League Esports Podcast. Today is a very special episode. We got guest Oxygen Gimmick in the house. Gimmick, thank you so much for joining us. How are we doing this morning? Of course. Thank you. I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. Yes, man. Of course. We're, we're happy to have you here. So we're just going to jump straight into this. And the first thing that I want to talk about a little bit is a, a question that we had on the stream. And someone is curious about how you got your name. How I got my name. Yeah, where does the name um, come from? It's not a really good story, I won't lie. <laughs> um, but, okay, so I don't I don't remember how the word I was looking up yeah. before gimmick, but I was looking up just words on thesaurus.com. I think I, I somehow, I think Shroud was one of the options. Clicked on Shroud. Oh, okay. And then they give similarities, like yeah. similar words. Or synonyms, and then I think gimmick was one of them. Cloak, some other ones. I've used cloak for a while, didn't like cloak, and then one day I tried gimmick, and I just never switched off that one. You know what? I gotta say though, that is, I feel like that's a very calculated approach to a username. Yeah. <laughs> like you go to the thesaurus, and then, you know, we're looking at synonyms and things like that. That's a very, I feel like a lot of people just go with like the, uh, you know, the standard approach of like xbox user generated or something like that so that's pretty interesting yeah, yeah i mean i yeah. love the name i think it's super i think it's a great a great Thank username you. yeah i mean i thought it was the coolest word on there so yeah that's the one that stuck i think a, a good username is one that's like fun to say you know mm -hmm. what i mean and, and i think gimmick is really fun to say so something i realized is it ha also has to be like it has to be able to be shortened for yes. like common purposes so, yeah. so one syllable, like, even if it's like half of it, like some people would say gim. Yeah. If like I'm in a com, like gim, you go, or like something like that. Gim, yeah. your turn. Something that, like that. Instead of like a, who would, who has a long name? Well, like, so you got like, name. so you got like Turbo Pulsa, but shortened yeah. to Turbo, it's still two turbo. syllables. That's true, yeah. It's or you just got the long. gim, just one syllable. Gim, yeah. That is a good point. I feel like a lot of people probably wouldn't think about that. You know when they're creating the name up front but yeah exactly yeah <clears throat> so let me ask about the, the beginning of rocket league right like how did you find the game did someone show it to you and, and what were your feelings about rocket league when you first you know when you first jumped in i first started playing rocket league when i think i was watching youtube videos mm -hmm. first came out like it had a, a bunch of hype all the big youtubers were playing it i know one specifically his name was kyr speedy mm -hmm. he's pretty like He's like a Minecraft streamer, but like okay. he also did like, and he, I watched him a lot. So I was like, oh, that, that game looks fun. I'll try it out. And I never stopped playing after <laughs> I got it. <laughs> so I, I just wanted to get better at it. Yeah. And then, yeah. So immediate hook. And you know, I hear this story a lot from Rocket League folks. Let me ask this. Did you play sports where like, do you have a competitive background? No, not competitive. I was like, athletic but i never joined any sports what about or anything like that what about other video games i've had like video games that i've like played consistently and got mm -hmm. good at but nothing like competitive yeah what uh, were some what were some of those games that you used to grind before rocket league the first one was call of duty yeah uh black ops one mm -hmm. that was the first one like i played all day all night <laughs> like i got really good at it yeah black ops 2 i got insanely good at that and then I, this was like I was like twelve mm -hmm. so around there, and then I didn't have a computer then. But then I got a computer, got into the computer games. And then it was CS, CS:GO. Okay, played that. Tried to grind it. Tried to get as good as I could. I had like one K hours, and then Rocket League came out. Yeah, and then that one took over. Do you think? I, I imagine most people are not intending to play video games with the. Like, when you first pick it up, it's not a goal to go pro. But do you think that thought was kind of in your mind? Like, I would yeah, like to 100%. pursue something like this? Yeah, every every time I picked up a game, it was only because I wanted to get insanely good at it at yeah. a top level. Because I, I don't know what, I think it's just a me thing, but I always felt like the game's the most fun when it's at that level. Yeah. That skill level. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. I, you know, you hear from some other pros where they may have pursued, in the, in the past pursued pro play in a different game and then they end up switching over and i always find it so at least in the rocket league category very impressive i know swapping from valorant to fortnite to overwatch is 
it's different skill sets, but it's similar, right? It's that first person yeah, shooter where, okay. yep. you know, somebody that comes over from, I don't know, League of Legends or something and starts playing Rocket League. I find that really impressive, but that's interesting. I, I do think that you find a lot of people that have kind of what you're talking about, just that mentality of like, as soon as I pick this up, I, like my, I want to be as absolutely good as I can be. I want to try to compete at the highest level possible. So that's interesting. So about that, that feeling, that desire to improve, how early on would you say that you became like pretty serious about it? Did you ever watch replays? You know, did you ever start doing like, you know, focused practice on like specific skills and stuff like that while you're climbing the rank ladder? Or is that something that came later on when you were like maybe in the bubble scene or something? At first, I wasn't intending to go pro. Yeah. Uh, I was friends with Squishy and like a lot of pros that are already pros. Mm -hmm. But I always told them like, I don't think I want to go pro. Or maybe it's not time yet. Yeah. But then I was kind of just pushed into it during a, like a mock it tournament. Mm -hmm. I had to sub in for Latch. And, but before that, I wasn't like looking at replays or anything like that. Yeah. It was kind of just like, like they needed me. So I was like, all right, I'm the sub. I'll do it. And then it just went well. I realized that I was decent. I wasn't like as bad as I thought. Yeah. So I would have, back then I had a, I just thought I wasn't going to be good Yeah, when it came down to it. But that really proved that, like, I wasn't that bad. Maybe I could keep it going. Yeah. And then I did I did try and do that, and then it worked out. So the, the sub really opportunity kind of lit a little spark there and, and made you believe you could really pursue the pro thing. Let me ask, when was that? What, you know, you're talking about players from early days, right? What, what season was yeah. that, or was that before RLCS started? This was before season four. Okay. Uh, yes, before season four, after Squishy Torment Latch didn't make mm -hmm. season three, I think. Okay. I think it was. Awesome, uh, awesome. Yeah, they, they didn't make the tournament. They were like, it was devastating. But, you know, they had problems with the team. Right. And then, yeah, Latch couldn't do that tournament. And it was in the off season, I'm pretty sure. So mm -hmm. uh, it was fine for me to just sub in. Yeah. And yeah, it was it was like... Squishy was like one of my best best friends back then. I always told him I wasn't ready. I didn't want to. Yeah. I kept telling he kept like trying to push me though <laughs> to like try and do it. But yeah, I just kept telling him like I couldn't do it. I didn't want to yet. Right. I didn't think I was ready. That's what it was. <clears throat> so let's let's go from that point forward then. And, like walk us through. We're subbing. It goes well. Squishy's in my ear telling me, let's go pro. You know, what are the next steps? Like how do, how do you end up on Muffin Man and, and, and some of these other teams that, and C9 even, that found so much success. Oh, uh, yeah. So after that, it became the Muffin Men. Yeah. Uh, we did. We, uh, I think DreamHack Atlanta was coming up. Like everyone was talking about it. Everyone was trying to get a team. I wasn't gimmick or pff, I wasn't Squishy and Torment's choice at first, but I was like, I kind of still want to try and make that land or go to that land. So yeah. I think I was going to, I was going to go with Moses and Timmy. But that didn't end up working out. I think Timmy couldn't make it because his parents wouldn't let him. So I was kind of just stuck. And then Squishy and Tor asked me, like, last minute. It was just really last minute. Because I remember it was like, I had to ask my parents still. Yeah. Because I was, like, below 18. I didn't even know if my parents were going to say yes. <laughs> and I had to take one of my parents, like right. a guardian, yep. with me. So, and I've never even, oh, before this, I never even... They didn't know about me playing this game. Like they, <laughs> they didn't know. Just in the room grinding. Yeah, th they only knew that, like, I, oh, yeah, I play that all day. That's yeah. it. But, and then, like, they actually said, yeah. And then they let me go. They paid for it all. Yeah. And then I I paid them back after. We won it. And then after that, we got, like, attention. Right. So, and then orgs started winning us. Cloud9. We, we decided on Cloud9, and then after that, it was just like, we were at, we were a team. Right. Now we were trying to win all these tournaments, you know, keep that keep that dynasty going, I guess. Mm -hmm. you dang right C9 was a team. Y'all were, I mean, very influential, to say the least. Very influential. I mean, we'll, we'll come back to that. I want to talk about that a little bit later. So we've, we've gone through kind of the beginning of things and how we land on Muffin Men and then that journey in C9. It's very interesting to hear that it was just kind of a, a last second thing too. And look what ended up, you know, unfolding yeah. because of it. But let's jump forward to 
Squishy leaving. We go to V1. You know, we, we stay there, and you don't even have to talk about this for a little bit. And then the V1 transition to oxygen. If you don't mind, give us a little bit of insight on that. You know, how did that change come about? Is that something that you were expecting? Is it something where, if I'm not mistaken, in the previous offseason, y'all did some different tryouts with different pairs? And so give us a little bit of info about the background there and, and some of that stuff. Yeah, so on V1, we had, like, we had rough periods. Mm -hmm. So, like, we thought at one point, well, it wasn't really us. It was more like the org thinking that we needed a roster change. Okay. So, like, they were pushing us to make roster changes. And, you know, that happens, so it's normal. Right. Oh, uh, yeah. At first, it wasn't, I wasn't the one that, that was going to, like, get removed from the team. Yeah, I know you're talking about those roster changes. It was, like, it was always for the betterment of the team. Like, if we were trying out a player that had a specific play style, we tried to make him fit in with the two right players. Like, if it was yeah. a defensive player, he would try out with me and Com. Mm -hmm. And if it was, like, a, a more offensive player, it would be me and Tor and then that offensive player. Mm -hmm. So it was always for the betterment of the team. It was always – I always, we always tried just making the team better because we knew, like, something was – we weren't performing. Right as we were expecting and then yeah after a couple months ago they told fire messaged me and said like the team's looking for to try different things in your spot i was like that's fine i, I obviously i, I want to do the same thing i want to look for new options yeah they they want to win as much as i do mm -hmm. i know that i know them they're really good friends of mine so yeah unfortunately i didn't have that during that time there weren't many teams that were looking at like make roster moves yeah. so i was very limited but fortunately enough oxygen was one of them and they were always in my mind just the players i know like how well they are how good they are yeah whenever i've played against them whenever i play with them in ranked or anything like that mm -hmm. but i always knew like they were just amazing players even though the results just weren't they weren't getting the results that they should have mm -hmm. based on their skill level but that didn't really stop me from like wanting to join them. Yeah. Because I knew like if they're good players and I think I'm a good player, it'll work out. Yeah. So it it ended up that ended up happening. Like I knew like if anything, I just wanted to help them. Mm -hmm. You know. Like maybe get a little better results than they were back then. Yeah. Then work your way up. Man, that is very interesting. So the V1 thing, you know, where the org and all three players are on the same page of like this banner V1 should be better and we're willing to make it better. Even if that means that it might, it might be me being removed. That is so unique. I feel like that doesn't happen very often. I feel like normally when roster changes happen, it's like bad results. The player that's performing the worst, they're going or personality conflicts or team environment issues or things like that. Very rarely do I hear of something like that where, you know, we're all on the same page for this and just trying to make the team better. That's really, really impressive. And I think it speaks volumes about all the parties involved. I think all three of you players that it says a lot about you guys and just your mentality towards competition in general. That's really impressive. And then second, I want to say your sentiment about Oxygen and the players is really interesting because it almost seems as though previous results on an individual level or on a team level are actually in a weird way becoming like less important. Like we're seeing, you know, I, I looked at, we were looking at an, an endpoint AMA yesterday on Reddit and someone asked about how they found Seiko and they were like, well, we looked at the ranked leaderboards first and I'm sitting there thinking ranked leaderboards f like mm -hmm. first, right? It used to be six mans, right? Or it used to be like, Weeklies or monthlies, right? Well, people, you got to prove yourself there and then you might start getting interest. But now we're seeing professional players and teams recognize the raw talent. And then, like you said, you believe like, hey, I know I got the ability. I think these two have the ability. So yeah, they missed out on two regionals in the fall split. And I agree with you. I think that's way underperforming for that roster. But that didn't stop you from saying, I believe in this team and I think we can, we can be good. So that is yeah. really interesting. And I think it's, just kind of growth for the scene. I think that's probably a good a good next step for 
um, the scene to take. So that's really interesting. Let's go ahead and transition over to just talking about oxygen. Like you said, you've landed here. You believed in those players. And I do. I totally agree. And I say this all the time. I think the roster, the oxygen roster, even before you joined, I think was way better than their results. And I mean, we look back at like Jamal Jabari, right? Yeah. Tosi and LJ. And I think it was Spider at the time. And I mean, that team was nasty. They were good back then. And so I, I am with you. And when you joined the team, I had a lot of faith and I thought that Oxygen will be elevated to a new level. I felt confident about regional regulars, but I had no idea y'all would do this. You know, I, I, did, not, I did not know y'all were going to pop like this. So let's talk a little bit about Oxygen. And so the first thing I want to ask about is when you jump into this team, What's the team environment like? What's the energy like? You know, how, how does everybody feel when you first get in here and get joining? Yeah, so, well, before this, I never, I've never talked to Toshi or LJ before. Okay. I've only known of them, yeah. right? So, obviously, it was like a first introductions, but Sad, the coach, I already knew. He was on C9. You right. know, he's a good friend of mine. Also, he's also like a big reason for like us doing so well. Yeah. I, I think he's just an amazing coach. He's helped us out, out tremendously each individually as well and i think we wouldn't be here without him mm -hmm. so i think he deserves all the credit honestly but yeah i mean the environment we all just want to win you know yeah. i think that's the biggest thing before i even joined sad told me what type of player they were looking for and it was just one that the, that that's hungry that's hungry mm. to win that wants to win everything that is also willing to put the work in and i was like wow that's perfect. Like that, I think I'm what you guys want. Yeah. I think that's I'm a fit in perfectly. And then yeah, after I joined, we got to work. Even before that, we were still screaming a lot. I was screaming a lot with them. Even though I was still like trying out with other teams, mm -hmm. they were the one team I was trying out the most with. And then so like even when I was trying out with other people, we were still like trying to refine our play style. Even though it wasn't <laughs> You're not confirmed. even in yet. <laughs> yeah. But. Funny. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that helped us, obviously, mm -hmm. more than anything. And then once we got official, it was just pure work, pure, like, we want to, we, we will do anything to, like, make the flow of the game better, make our strap better, yeah. really, like, not limit each other. Mm -hmm. If, like, if, if that means, like, I'll play, like, a more reserved role or, like, right. someone else will, mm -hmm. they're willing to do that for the sake of the team or something like that. Yeah. I'm pretty sure, like, we wouldn't mind doing that. We just, we know if it'll help the team out, we'll do it for sure. Yes, I love that mindset. Okay, so I have a couple of just follow-up questions. You talk about Sad Jr. and some of the impact that he made uh, or, or some of the impact that he has made on this team and, and how much you value that. What are some, and I actually remember you on the main broadcast in an interview talking about how you worked specifically or even individually with Sad. What are some of the adjustments that you've had to make uh, maybe play style wise or, or comms or anything like that from previous teams to this oxygen roster probably the biggest thing would be a difference in my comms okay yeah i didn't realize this before but i did i did used to say a couple things that just weren't unnecessary yeah and of course like sad told me about it and i was like you're right i didn't even realize so i think my comms have definitely improved or changed but improved now they're more like they're more precise. They're more like, I say them at the right times. I say what I need to say without saying enough or more yeah. or less. When it comes to play style, I think, I think Sad wanted me to not really limit myself. So he wanted to use my strengths to help the team, mm -hmm. whether it's be me like ball chasing, you know, I'm more of an <laughs> aggressive player. He knows right. that. So he, he definitely wanted me to like, play that role a little so i think i definitely still do that i think overall the way we we handle ourselves the way we play it makes me play better mm -hmm. like on both ends of the field def defensively offensively when it comes to passing i think it just works out really well because of the way it's all we all set it up yeah or sad has set it up and it sounds too like you guys mentality towards it is is it's beneficial for everyone. Like you said earlier, if somebody maybe even in a series or like they're having a bad day needs to kind of peel back and, and let the other two shine that everybody's willing to do that. And that's, yeah. that is, I mean, it's the ultimate way to play the game. You know, you need to be there. It's not about gimmick. It's about oxygen, right? It's about the team and performing yeah. it and, and succeeding. So that's, 
That's really, really awesome to hear. I like that a lot. So let me ask a couple questions here. We got one I want to ask about what were you guys like expectations or even goals when you first got together? You know, what is it like realistically? What are we thinking that we can do? And then I want to ask you, well, you go, go ahead and answer that one first. Go ahead and answer that one. Right. So Sad had a couple goals for the team he yeah. told us about. And then I had a couple personal goals. Okay. Or I just had personal goals. I really didn't know. Like, I was hoping we'd do well, and I thought we would do well. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know how well, of course. Right. Obviously, I couldn't ex predict all that. Sad thought, like, this roster could be top eight. Mm -hmm. Top 12, top eight. I agreed with him. I think definitely. I think, if anything, like, it's, it'd be the same as I was on for me on V1. Right. Or better. But for me, personally, I didn't, ex I didn't know what to expect. But I was just hoping for top eight. Top eight's pretty good, yep. reasonable. You know, it's not. It's not like a. It's not like you're doing. It's not like amazing, but it's also like you're not a bad team, right? And it, as long as you're top eight, there's room to improve. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you're top eight just like that, that's just like that. Just means you have to put more work in, and the more work you put in, top six will come, top four will come. Right. Right. And I think. I don't know. I mean, I'm happy with the way things turned out. Obviously, I didn't expect it all, <laughs> but yeah, I think obviously, like we're all happy with it. So. Right. It sounds like you guys kind of had your expectations tempered, just in, in a realistic manner. You know, we're we're not we're not expecting to make a roster change and be top four, but at mm -hmm. the same time, we believe in this roster, and and I think top eight uh, or eight to twelve area, I think is more than realistic. I think um, yeah. that's totally fair. So, and you kind of talked about it a little bit there at the end, but. How does everyone feel finding this immediate success? I mean, you guys are, you're in the fifth spot right now. Like you're going to the winter major at this current moment. I know we got this weekend coming up and we'll see how those results unfold. And there's a lot of teams that are biting at your heels, but right now you're, you're there. How does that feel? Honestly? Well, it feels good. I didn't expect it. <laughs> I think, I think I knew that it could happen. Right. Cause like I, I rate LJ and Tosi mm -hmm. highly and I think they're amazing players that just are capable of winning a lot yeah so i was i was surprised i was surprised yeah. but i was also like it makes sense right. you know it makes sense that's They're exciting. really good players this is a good roster in my opinion i totally agree man i totally agree so one cool thing i just want to make a quick note is is that we've got the original c9 roster on three different teams you know and i'm sure i'm sure there was a part of you that was sad to in the duo of uh, Gimmick and Torment, right? You guys team forever. Uh, but now we have all three of you on three different teams, and all three teams are still very, very successful. And I think that just shows the work ethic, the determination, and, and, and in all reality, just the talent and skill and ability that you all three had and that C9 team had. That was, like I said, a very influential team, a very, just a big deal in the Rocket League history. So I just want to make that note real quick. I think that's pretty awesome. And kind of on that note, you've been on a few different teams now, and they have all found relative success. So I just want to ask, is there, do you feel like there is a key ingredient to finding success? We've seen a few other players do this as well. I mean, Turbo is one of them. He bounces, I mean, even region to region, right? And so what do you think it is that it keeps those players, even when they're on new and different rosters, towards the top of, of their region and, and of pro play? Yeah, I think I think skill's a big part of it. Right. I definitely think like if you're good enough, you'll definitely do decent at the minimum. But it also comes down to your work ethic. I agree for sure. How you view your job, your career. Yeah. I think you have to take it really seriously if you want to get better. I think all three of us on C9 definitely had that mindset. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why, like, together it worked, and then outside of it also worked, like, when yeah. we separate. Yep. I think, I don't know, it's tough, because it, it, I think it's possible to, like, still have skill and not. I think there's yes. still some players that aren't as lucky. Yep. But, you know, that's some, that stuff happens. Mm -hmm. You can't really do much about it. Yeah, I totally agree. I think obviously skill plays a big role in it, but we've seen, I'm not going to name any names, but there's some players that come to mind that have, I mean, an absolutely insane level of talent. And, you know, they found success on one team and then they moved to a new team and, and the team is, is struggling. And so I, I agree with you. 
I'm curious if, especially when you bounce team to team, and that sounds really negative, but when you end up on a new team, I feel like, and let me know if you agree, I feel like your mentality is a really big part of that and just mm -hmm. how you treat your teammates. And you said it too, how you treat your job, right? Because it is a job. It's fun and, and, you know, you should enjoy yourself, but it is a job. Yeah. No, I 100% agree. You also, <clears throat> depending on the roster changes, you can't control your roster. Right. Sometimes players get stuck Yeah. with a, like orgs get bought out you know buy mm -hmm. you out and you can't really do much about it but at the same time it still comes down to like putting all your all into like your passion yeah. like for me this is my passion yeah. so i personally will do everything for it to try and improve constantly mm -hmm. i still have that mindset that i had way back when i found this game so whenever that dies down i think that's when yeah. i'll probably retire but yeah. i don't see that happening anytime soon you don't see that happening anytime soon. Okay, that's actually, uh, we'll, we'll put that, we'll pin that on the board because I think that's a question that we have later on. All right, so let's jump into just talking a little bit about Regional 3 here. So, like we just mentioned, currently fifth place in Winter Points. Right now, you guys are in the driver's seat of your own destiny, right? Like, if you yeah. outperform the teams that are competing with you for that fifth spot, you're in. Thoughts on that? How does that feel? Is it like, does it bring extra weight? Is it something that you would prefer to be in that driver's seat? You know, how, talk to me a little bit about that. Oh, yeah. As a player, I think everyone's going to say that you would rather prefer to be in the driver's seat yeah. than to like be like an envy where it's like you're relying on other people. Right. Just this way you feel, it's not even pressure. You really don't feel that. I don't okay. think it would be pressure. I think you just feel like you, you want it, so you're going to perform, mm -hmm. right? You're going to do it all. You're going to do everything you can to, to make it. Yeah. And when you're not in the driver's seat, you don't have that. You can't. Yeah. It's not the mindset you, you can have because you could still not make it. That's right. So <clears throat> obviously the goal is to make major and, and outperform, what is it, V1, Rogue, and Rebellion, I think, that are a little behind you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I want to ask this question then. Is there, do you guys have any type of different approach for this week or is it just kind of stick to the game plan? This is what we always do and we're going to continue doing what we do. Yeah. I mean, so far, nah, I think we just, we're going to stick to our game plan. Mm -hmm. We're going to stick to what works, what makes us us. Yeah. I like that. All right. So <clears throat> Gimmick and I talked a little bit about things before we jumped on, on the, on the stream here, but I'm going to go ahead and make him say it again. So. What are your thoughts about this winter format relative to the fall? And then keep in mind that I think, I don't know that players are, are thinking about this, but spring is just going to be straight double elim, right? There's no groups. There's no Swiss. It's going to be savage. And so I want to hear your thoughts about formats. We've heard plenty of complaints about formats and tiebreakers and, and seating and blah, 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 blah. So what do you think about that stuff and, and specifically this winter format? Right. So... This this format, well, I've never really been a format type of person. Like, I, I never really look at a format. And I'm like, wow, this is a bad format. Yeah. I think this is bad for teams. Mm -hmm. I think if you're if you're gonna if you're yeah, you have if you have a matchup, and you think you should win it, you you probably you're gonna try and win it, regardless <laughs> of the format, whatever. Right. I think that's the type of mentality I always have for everything. So the format really doesn't. I don't think about it at all that yeah. much unless, but there has been a couple of times where I have been like, wow, that's kind of, it's kind of weird that they're doing it like this. For example, being fifth in the region and playing closed quals. Yeah. <laughs> I, actually, that was kind of just unfortunate because yeah. oxygen, like their points were bad because uh, mm -hmm. they didn't, I think they missed out on one. They missed the first two regionals in the fall. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So they kind of just got lucky mm -hmm. and that was just kind of like, the roster underperforming, right? Yep. Even yep. though they shouldn't have. So that's just unfortunate. Well, uh, like situation. It sounds like just your approach to competing in general, it's just a simple approach of like, I don't care about the format. I don't care what I have to do. I'm just playing the game against the people that are across from me and I'm going to beat them. Mm -hmm. I, so, think, I think, well, for me, it's, it's had success. It keeps me focused. It keeps yeah. me like wanting to improve because. If I'm better than, like, if I think I'm better than another team, I'm going to I'm obviously think I'm going to win. And yeah. then that's going to drive me to, like, perform during the match. Yeah. 
I, I love so, the approach. I think that's a, a great way to do it. And, and it just, what it does is I think it owns responsibility. When you start blaming external things like a format or seating exactly. or something like that, you give away control. Like I, when you say that those things are responsible for your losses, well, that kind of implies that you can't do anything about it. And I feel like that is limiting at the very least. Well, on this topic of, uh, on this topic of format, what do you think about the different RLCS structures? We, we used to have the RLCS and RLRS, two separate leagues, and now we've got one nine, ten month long circuit. So, you know, how, how, how do you feel about the differences in those? Do you prefer one? You know, give me some insight from a player's perspective on the different formats. I think, yeah, I mean, it's been, it's been a major difference. Mm -hmm. I think back then I had a different approach or a different view of it. I yeah. thought it was kind of weird, league play and all that. I thought it was kind of weird just playing, a, what was it, like eight games? Yep. Best of fives, uh, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then playoffs. I thought that was kind of straightforward, simple. Mm -hmm. So I didn't think much of it. I thought it was just regular, like most most esports would, or not even just esports, just competitions would have it like that. Yeah. And then once it changed to this, I feel like it made everything more serious, more like now there's more, it's more structured, mm -hmm. like there's more for the players to do, more games to play. Yep. There's more for players to look for or look forward to. Yeah. And it also just, I think it would promote consistency. Which yes. Is a big thing for like, if you're a top team and want to stay a top team, just be consistent. I think the good teams are going to do that for sure. Mm -hmm. And the bad teams won't. They will die down. Right. That's a I, good way to like weed that out. Yeah, I totally agree, man. I think that is one of the really important changes to the structure because in the previous format, when you had CS, there was 10 teams and two of them would go to that promo relegation, right? And they may not even be rele relegated. So you may just have the same 10 in the league. And that means that if you just make top eight, you're safe, right? So yeah. I agree. It, it almost like in a roundabout way could even promote complacency where players feel like, you know, maybe I'm not going to win, but I'm also not going to be relegated. So I'm just kind of comfortable where I am. Yeah. And like you were saying, that ain't going to work in this format, right? Like you got to be busting your yeah. tail all the time. So I totally agree. I definitely like the, the, the aspect that you brought up about consistency. I think you got to be working all the time in this format because if not, and this is my favorite part about it, it's open. So any, mm, any true. person out there that is working hard can come and take your spot. And I, I really, really like, so I'm a big fan of this new format. One thing that you mentioned was there's a lot more to look forward to. There's a lot more to play for. There's a lot more to win. There's more money to grab. But if we turn that token over, there's a lot more to lose, right? There's a lot more failure that happens. And I've heard it a couple times through different interviews or podcasts from pros, it has to be tough when you have competitions every other week and you're not performing to the level that you know you can. And for some teams that are a top five team, maybe that means they get top seven. Or a team that is like expecting to make regionals and they end up falling out in closed quals. It's just, what I'm saying is I think that this format almost puts more pressure on players to have a good competitive mentality. Would you agree with that? Oh, 100%. I yeah. think because that has happened to me on V1. It was always tough, you know, not getting what the results we were wanting. But also, you got to, it also makes you stay focused. Right. You can't focus on that. You got to, this just means you got to put in more work, you know, you got to yeah. keep going, keep pushing. Yeah. So, you know, it's tough, but, you know, you can't really see it just as a negative side of it. Mm -hmm. Use it as fuel. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I love it, man. All right, so we talked a little bit about the regional, and let's get a little bit deeper into North America. And so we'll just talk about the North American landscape at the moment. We've got a lot of changes from fall to winter, and I think it has definitely shaken up the structure of North America. So give me some, some of your just initial thoughts on G2 phase space station changes. G2. I think G2, I think, well, they... They're doing amazing, so <laughs> right. I think amazing roster move. Atomic, an amazing player. Any team he's going to join, probably is going to do amazing. Phase. They're they're a pretty good team. We've played them. We've scrimmed them. Not that much, but we have played them. 
you know, regional, they were pretty good. And then in scrims, they're always really good. But whether they can do that in attorney, mm -hmm. you know, it's up to them. Right. I think they're very capable. I think that team is very capable of being a really good team. And as well as the SSG roster, I think that team as well. They, they, they are very capable of doing really well, and I think they will. I think all those roster members are just, there's really no downside. I think all those teams really gained except for Envy. Mm -hmm. Just because right now they're, like, they're having troubles with, like, team structure. Right. And they don't know how they want to play yet. So I think that's, over time, they'll fix that, and then they'll right. be back, like, yeah. as a comp, as so a competitor. So those teams that, that we mentioned... G2 phase and Space Station, you know, they 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 missed the major, but they're still a top team in North America. So it almost feels like they like the top just got stronger, right? Yep. And it may take a little bit of time. You know, I don't think phase is anywhere near their final form, but it sounds like they got a little bit stronger. But with that being said, we have had this influx of talent, and it's not all young talent. We we talked about Space Station, that's Daniel, someone that just mm -hmm. turned 15. We've got Rogue adding Aqua, someone that just turned 15. But we also had Beast Mode, who was not playing in the fall for whatever reason. And, you know, he pumps into the V1 spot and then that pops you to the oxygen roster. And so we've got like just this influx of new talent in the fall or excuse me, in the winter after fall. And it seems like it has strengthened the middle level of North America, which Gimmick and I talked about a little bit beforehand, how North America has always been very, very top heavy. But now we've got oxygen in fifth, V1 in sixth, Rogue in seventh, Rebellion in eighth. And it's all Parth. I want to shout Parth out too. Uh, a new addition to the Rebellion roster. So we've got this this wave of, of talent, and it has strengthened the mid-level of North America. And, and so I just want you to, I don't know, give me give me a little bit of thoughts on that. You know, some of those teams, Rogue, Rebellion, V1. How do we feel about them? Do we think that's something that we can continue to improve on? Do you think that some of these players on these rosters that may be star, star players, do you think that there's the potential for them to get plucked? and put on a maybe a higher level team you know give us give me some of your thoughts on, on that mid-level of north america yeah i mean it's very competitive uh v1 amazing team i think with beast mode they're gonna do amazing rogue with aqua they're doing amazing as well all these teams are just every time like parth filled in for beast mode but every like it wasn't like they were downgrading it right. wasn't like they're now gonna be worse it's, it's like wow look at them parth is like filling in his shoes perfectly even better so i really just think like it's gonna make the the games more entertaining for everyone yeah closer like it's just gonna be better storylines and all that yes i'm glad you said um, that i think that is a, a really important part of it because for the the longest time it was just the top three we talked about the big three a long time ago top four even in rlcsx top five area just beating on everyone else right and now we finally got some teams that can kind of punch back. One other quick um, quick thing I want to note is like we continue to see this trend of these players, and you mentioned it earlier, how the previous results are not all that important. I'm not saying you throw them out and nobody cares, but Daniel's never played an RLCS. Aqua's never played an RLCS. Beast Mode has. I know, I, you know, I know that he's a little bit of a unique case anyways. And then Parth, you know, he's floated around and made it into a couple regionals on different teams. But we're seeing this influx of new talent that may not have the rich history of results, but they've got that talent. They've got that mechanical ability. Exactly, Do you think yeah. the game is moving more towards that mechanical area where it may not matter so much about being a legacy pro or or your experience? It's more about like what can you do skill wise? I think I think yeah and no. Yes and no, just because okay. I think pro level, I think to a point, mechanics only get you so far. Mm -hmm. I think most pros right now have the mechanics that you need. Like, right. there's a, like, fine line, and as long as you're above that line, you're good. Yeah. But then you also need, like, game sense. You need, like, teamwork. You need more stuff that is not just mechanics. Right. So as long as you have a player that has the mechanics but is also willing to do all those other stuff or, or just learn, yeah. you know? Some of these players are young. They don't know. So learning is the best thing they could do, and I think... All those players already, they're, that's how they are. Part, yeah. you know, Aqua, Daniel, too. Except he's, like, he's at a, the higher level, so yeah. it's more pressure for him. But I think he's an amazing player. I think he'll learn quickly. And I think Ruddles and Arsenal are going to do it. Chrome, too, are going to be doing an amazing job to show him how 
how it's done. Yeah, man, I, I totally agree. It, it sounds like, this is going to be kind of a rhetorical question, it sounds like you are saying that there is more to being a pro than just what you can do with your car. Oh, yeah. 100 percent 100 percent yeah that's right so this is a this is a question here that we got from my twitch chat earlier this week and they were asking about practice regimen so you know a lot of traditional sports have i mean like personal trainers they have people that lay out their diet and stuff like that and i know esports isn't there yet but do you guys do you guys have any sort of structure as far as practice or is it more pretty loose and it's just like you need to have Somewhere in this amount of hours past two, you know, what does that look like as far as at a professional level? Is there any sort of regimen or structure as far as practice goes? Yeah, so Sad would set up our scrims. It's very organized how he does it. So it helps us uh, stay organized, the players, and keep yeah. up with everything. When it comes down to like, like, I personally play the game a lot, so I don't really have to worry about hours or anything or playing the game. I, I'm always probably on the game. I always yeah. try and like, whether I'm just sitting here, I'll probably be in free play, you know, yeah. or something. But also, like, do a lot of hand exercises. Okay. So, yeah, that's just a me thing. I think that helps me just because, like, uh, I've read, like, yeah. you got to keep your hands, you know, like, healthy and all that. So, mm -hmm. I don't know when I read that. It was a couple years ago. And then after that, I just started doing it. And it became a habit. And I guess that could be a reason why... I'm, my hands are good now. Yeah, but absolutely. Know, but I'm going to continue to keep doing that, so. Absolutely. Okay, we'll kind of, we're going to stay on this path, but I do want to ask you this. So you were one of the, I mean, in reality, you were one of the pioneers for directional air roll, right? What's that? Directional uh, air roll, like air roll left? Air roll left, yeah. I'm not, I mean, I think so. I'm not sure. No, you definitely, well, uh, the thing is, when, uh, back in like season five, six, seven area, there were not many players that were using directional air roll just yet, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. And you true. you definitely were. I guess so. And By default. So do you even have traditional free air roll? I do. Yeah, I have yeah. air roll left, and then I have normal air roll, which every now and then I would use a power slide two on there, on square. Right. But yeah, I don't have the right one. Only left. Only left. Okay. So... Do you have any thoughts about directional air roll? I ask because it's a it's a pretty common topic on, on my stream, and I am an I am a directional air roll voucher. I'm not very good at the game, but I think it's important because it frees up you to use all 360 degrees of your stick, right? Whereas, mm -hmm. like, if you're going to air roll left in the old traditional manner, you have to move your stick to the left side, which means you can only use like half of your range of motion, right? And so, yeah. for the ranked ladder. In reality, it's probably not that important. But when you get to your level, I think it is important. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Because, like, there's players that don't right. use it. Yep. And, like, they're still pro players. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I guess they're doing fine. Yeah. But then there's also players that use both. And then they're just, like, super mechanical. Mm -hmm. And then there's me. I use one. I'm just in the middle, I think, I guess. <laughs> I don't think it's an important thing. I don't think you need it. I think I can help with things. So if you want to, like, do something easier... To help you do it easier? Yeah. Why not? You know? Okay. Why not? So, you know, from my perspective, we went from a period where, of competitive, I'm not even talking about me, pro professional play. We went from a period where pretty much no one was using it. And then a few people that were very mechanical, like I said, you were, you're very quick, very aggressive, very mechanical player. We saw Astral bust onto the scene, dual directional yeah. air roll user. We saw Jorias bust onto the scene, dual directional air roll user. And... We're seeing more and more professional players adopt at least one of them. And when they do, it almost seems that it completely takes over. Like they become directional air roll main. And so from my perspective, it almost feels like, I think you're probably right at the moment. It may not be that big of a deal, especially because you got players like Alpha, who's a, like a freak on the oh, field yeah. and he doesn't use directional air roll. He's obviously incredible. But it almost feels like if you don't get on the wave, there may come a day where you're not going to be able to keep up. And I think when you get to your level, my my personal perspective or opinion on it is if there's a tool available, why not use it? Exactly. Right. Yeah. If there, if there's something yeah. that could possibly make you better, why not learn it? And I'm not I'm not you know I'm not saying that they have to implement it into their pro pro, pro gameplay right now, but if they ignore it and they refuse, I think it could come back to bite them long term. I think so too. Yeah, I think it would depend though how yeah. they would treat the game. I, I think if they're they they just 
don't improve with the normal arrow, right. then yeah. But if you know, if they can if keep just up, just adding that arrow would improve them. I think they would do it. I think every pro just has that mindset. Yeah, like it's about if something so easy as that would help them. I think they'll do it mm -hmm. easily. Yeah, I think some are kind of deterred because it is like a, a new learning curve, and obviously that's yeah. frustrating. But I, I mean, I agree with you. I think right now we're not at a point where it's like. If you don't use directional arrow, you can't be pro, and I think that's obvious. I mean, Chicago, I don't, I don't know that he's, I don't know if he's still, I know he hasn't bound, or at least Liquipedia says he does, but I don't know if he yeah. uses it. And then Mist as well. He use it every now and then. Yeah, Mist is one of them I was thinking of that. Yeah, and obviously those are, you know, we mentioned Alpha, Mist, and Chicago. Those are incredible players, and so I, I totally agree. I think it is not something that's an absolute necessity, but I do think it can kind of, like, future-proof, you know what I mean? Like, long-term, you know, three, yeah. four, five years every pro might be using it. Mm -hmm. So I am, I am in, uh, a fan of jumping on the wave. So, okay, I want to bounce back a little bit to our, our discussion about the NA landscape of like the top getting a little bit stronger, the, the mid-level getting a little bit stronger. And I want to compare NA and EU, right? So North America and, and Europe are pretty competitive. And I know that Europe has more world championships overall. They won the most recent international event, but... I think at the top five, like when you have the major teams, I think it's relatively comparable, right? I think it's pretty competitive between the two regions. EU probably has the edge. You know, that's fine. But I don't think they've less left NA in the dust, right? But what I do think is EU has a lot more depth. Like their 8 through 16 is a lot more competitive than North America's 8 through 16. Would you agree with that? So the thing is, I don't really know. I don't really watch E. I should have asked much. that first. Especially the 8 through 16 part. Right. I think I know like the top 8 yeah. probably, but not the 8 through 16. But I don't know. I feel like NA has a good 8 through 16. I think like CLT, for right. example, they're a good team. I think those players could definitely be like an energy. And they have before. Yeah. That's the thing. So they're not, that doesn't mean like, that means that they're good just right. by that. Like, they can't do it. If they did it once, they could do it again. Yeah. And, not, and just not against NRG. So, I don't know. I mean, how can... If the 8 through 16th in EU is better than that, then... I mean, yeah, I guess, but... I it, it's, really... it's, definitely, it's definitely a debatable topic. It's something that has been discussed on a, a few different platforms and, and by different people. I think something that's interesting is like... And, and, and I guess you're kind of in the same boat now with Oxygen now where you guys are coming through the close qual and... and I don't think it would be crazy to see you guys win this regional. But we saw that in Europe in regional one of the winter where Queso is literally the last team to qualify through closed. Like they made it in round five of Swiss and then they come through and just win the whole event. And then yeah. in regional two, we've got in, in Europe again, we've got Guild who added CRR to the roster. They've been struggling, even missing on some closed quals. And they come through closed qual and they jump into. I think they made it to top eight, maybe top six. And so I think I, I do personally feel as though some of the EU talent more at the bottom, like I said, eight or 10 through 16 is a little bit stronger than North American teams. But I guess there's really no way to tell because yeah. those teams are not going to play one another. And it's just kind of subjective at that point. I feel like what Queso did, a team he, in North America could do the same thing. You think so? I think so because... Like a CLT, for example. Yeah. I think they could do that if they're playing, like, amazingly that day. Right. Like, they're just playing absolutely, like... Because all those three players are good enough players to, like, play amazingly. As long as, like, they all play amazingly on that day. Yeah. And then together as a team, I think they could, they could easily, like, win it all. But whether they do that, you know, it's up to them. Right. But I definitely think they have the skill level to do it, whether they do it or not. It's not up to me. Okay. You know? Interesting. All right. Very cool. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah, we're going to, here's the thing. I'm going to clip this. Like I'm going to clip this where gimmick says anybody can do it. I'm going to send it to all those teams. Hopefully they'll get a little confidence boost. <laughs> <laughs> they may be coming for your spot. So you better watch out. All right. Yeah. So last thing that I want to talk about here is just the major and more. So I know you don't want to get ahead of, you know, we don't, we don't want to put the wagon before the horses. Right. But let's just say that we do make the major, you know, how, how is, how does that feel? Something that you and I talked about before we got on here was it's the first in crowd uh, or, or first in-person event that has a crowd in over two years at this point. 
if we were to make it, what does that mean to you? How does that feel? To make it would be amazing. It would feel amazing. It's it'd be a goal of ours. So yeah. achieving that goal would obviously make us all very happy. Right. I think it'd be amazing to to just like meet the team finally. Yeah, yeah you know? true. I didn't think about that. And then play together. Like that's an, a big step. Yeah. Uh, in for most teams, seeing how we play on land and all that. Yeah. Seeing how we play there, that'd be amazing. But making it. Just making it would feel amazing just because we've been to land in a while. Yeah. So kind of miss it. It's probably, Excited. and you you tell me if this is correct or not, but I, I feel as though I would feel kind of a sense of, just a sense of pride after, you know, ending up on a new roster and having to kind of restart basically. And I know you're not starting from square one. Tosi and LJ are, are ballers as well. But just having to restart and then immediately ascending back to a level where you're you're at the major i feel like that's got to feel pretty sweet i think so yeah i would definitely not see it as a as like a i would see it as a like i've earned it yeah it's just pride because, in your in your work exactly and i think all of us would feel just satisfied yeah satisfied that's the word yeah not not any feelings towards others just proud of what you've been able to do exactly yeah yep. and finally showing that Yes, yes. Together. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is obviously a long ways off, but do you guys ever find yourself looking at worlds or thinking about worlds? I know we've got an entire major and then a spring split, and there's a lot of work to be done, but do you find yourself ever kind of glancing at it or, or like looking at it and saying, you know, I, I, that's what I'm working towards? Yeah, a little. Just kind of uh, in the back well. of your mind, maybe? Yeah, well, the thing is, like, I, I try not to let that happen. Like, mm. I, I try and stay focused. Okay. I try, and, I try and... I've done that before as a thing, and it hasn't worked out for me. Right. So I've learned that I should just stay focused. On the present. Exactly, yeah. That, that too, mindfulness, yeah. I tried... That's something I work very hard on. Okay. To, to practice mindfulness that keeps me... That helps... That would help me with competitiveness. Yes, absolutely, dude. I love that you brought that up because... We talked a little bit earlier about like regimen and some of the comparisons mm -hmm. between traditional sports. I think this is something that could help the esports world tremendously is just focusing on mental health in general. So I, yeah. I, I love that you brought that up, man. I think that's incredible. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we don't want to get too carried away with major and everything like that. Like you said, you want to stay present. We're going to focus on this week right now. So I got just a few questions and then I'll let you get out of here. These are some questions from the stream. And so the first one is they were curious because you rocked a Finnick in closed qual, and so everybody was shocked to see you off the dom. And so I guess they're just curious about your, your, you know, why did you play that car? Is there any type of thought process? Or my guess, it's just what feels good. Yeah, you're right. Uh, <laughs> I thought so. I think I'm becoming into, like, those players. I have two cars. Yeah. I made two cars. Like, uh, like Arsenal, he uses Octana and Fennec a lot. Mm-hmm. But except for me, it'd be Dom and Fennec. Okay. So I'm just going to, I think I'm just going to be switching between the two. Yeah. Fennec has been feeling pretty good recently. So I've been using it. Sad and I talked about it. He said it's fine. So as long as it's like I'm comfortable in it, he said, yeah. that's funny. He knows like that, that'll give the results that we want right. in the game. Like I'll be, if I'm feeling good, I'll be like hitting my shots. I'll be mm -hmm. passing it better, or whatever. Yeah. So it's, it's just funny because it's like, even it is a different hitbox, and I know it plays a little bit different, but it's not a huge difference, right? It's not like like say you're a DPS main in Overwatch and you switch over to a tank, right? Like that's something yeah. totally different. And I feel I almost feel like Rocket League viewers think the same way about cars, like oh, gimmick in a finick. Oh my, you know, like we're we're freaking out. Yeah. So I thought that was pretty funny. All right, we got another question here about your success long term. How do you stay motivated? to continue to, to grind enough to stay at that top level because you, we've talked about it many times throughout this conversation. It's not easy to get there and it's certainly not easy to stay there, right? So how do you stay motivated to just stay at the top of your game and at the top of the scene? I think the biggest thing is that I enjoy playing the game. Yeah, I think most players that retire just don't feel that way towards the game anymore. Yep. I think... I don't think I've ever not liked playing the game. I think I'm still addicted as I was in 2015. That's like, great. I probably play this game more, so <laughs> I, just, just, I don't know. I still really like playing the game. I find it 
so fun, especially at the level I'm at. Mm-hmm. It makes it even more fun. Uh, I have so much passion for it, so I try everything. I try and put everything towards it. Yeah. So, yeah. man, that I gotta tell you, that's really refreshing to hear because. Unfortunately, I don't think that's super common. I really don't. I know that there are a lot of people that love competing, right? They love the aspect of um, tournaments and like the big events, but we see so many people talking about how it's not fun to grind. It's not fun to get in ranked and things like that. So it's really refreshing to hear that you ha- still have that drive and that passion, the same that you did when you first picked up the game. <clears throat> so you kind of talked about this a little bit earlier, but it, it is a question. So people or one of the questions that someone asked was, do you see yourself competing for multiple future seasons and does having this longer structured season increase burnout or even the opposite, does it help with motivation? I think for me, I'm only going to speak personally. Right. It helps with motivation. I could see it going the other way for some players. I think, well, I don't want to, I, I want to keep competing. I don't see myself yeah. not competing for a long time. I, I'm telling as long as like I like playing the game and like competing, I won't stop playing. Yeah. Like that's that won't change and if that changes, I'll let everyone know. Yeah. Man, again, that's that's super refreshing to hear. I, I really like hearing that. So this is kind of a goofy question. And there's been a little bit of debate about this recently. Uh, I think it's I think it's gonna be funny to hear. So who do you think is the Rocket League GOAT? Oh, that's a tough one. It, it is kind of tough. I mean it has to be K Dop. Right. Okay. Because he's won a lot. He's won the a most. lot. Not the most. Hasn't he won the most? He's won three. Ooh. He's won three world championships. Turb's got four though. Oh, Turbo. What about lands in general though? Doesn't he um, have more? I don't know. K Dot may have more lands. I, I don't know. I'd have to I look think, that up. I think he has more lands in general. Okay. He doesn't have more worlds. That's true. So that that would be Turbo in that case. I don't know. I kind of rate the. The lands more highly oh. just because, you know, there's still tournaments that are right. like, you got to win them. You know, it's, they're, they're tough to win. Yeah. But it's true that Turbo did win four times. Do you, think, do you think the conversation is just like 100% between those couple players and, and it probably doesn't include anyone else? I think right now, yeah. Yeah. Just because their history and like their yes. legendness. Yes, I agree. <laughs> I guess. I agree. Uh, but you could also make a case for like players like Garrett, who've always been in the scene mm-hmm. and have always been doing really well. Yeah. I, uh, I, I personally think, I agree with you. I think it's probably between KDOP Turbo, but I also think you could throw somebody like Squishy in there too. Yep. I agree. I agree. Squishy, Squishy, I think Squishy in the future, future like maybe like a year from now. Yeah. He's going to like definitely be on the legend. Like, Mm-hmm. K-Dop turbo status. Yeah. Who who else would there be? Man, yeah. I think that's I pretty much it. I mean, you've got names like Cooks yeah. and Crow, and they were obviously pioneers and, and, and goats up front, but they just didn't have the success that some of these other names have had. And, had, and they obviously, I know Cooks are still kicking around, but unfortunately not at the very top of the scene. And so he just hasn't had the success long-term that players like Garrett and Squishy and even K-Dop and Turbo have had. One yeah. thing that I think is interesting is we just got we're, – we're, we're in a new era, right? And this is something that Jordy was talking about on Twitter because this GOAT discussion has been popping up everywhere. But, like, a world championship now is going to be weighted so much more heavily, don't you think, than, like, a previous world championship? I, th- I think so. I think so, yeah, just because of the seasons and all the season right. format. But I don't think you should still take it away. I agree. From Yeah, right? I don't yeah. think it, that'd be fair because I think they still deserve – like, Turbo definitely deserves all the wins he's gotten, even yeah. if they were, like, so long ago. I think – it was not easy to do what he did. So. That's right. That's right. Just because it's different now doesn't take away from the accomplishments that, that they achieved back then. That's really interesting take. I, I, I got to say, I am surprised that you are maybe leaning a little bit more towards KDOT, but I like that. That's really interesting. All right. So yeah. final question, and then I'll let you get out of here. Um, do you have any type of plans after pro play? We've seen someone like Rizzo jump into the content space. We've seen someone like Sathu. And Snasky jump into a coaching space, sad as well. Do you think you want to stick around in esports when the time does come? Do you think you want to maybe pivot and go into a different type of career field? What is what you know? What is your ideal like super long term thing after pro play? Mm, the thing is like 
before like this job, this career, I've never had such a passion towards yeah. anything else. So if I find that to something else, I think that's what I would want to do. But right now, I don't know what that is. Just present. The content, then I don't know. Like, it's content, but. Yeah. Right now, I'm not even that much of a content person, so I can't really, like, see myself doing that, right? Yeah. So, but yeah, I am very present-minded, so yeah. Hey, you know what? I love it. Just live in the moment. Enjoy it right now. And, man, you're killing it. I, I tell you, I was an Oxygen fan before, and, man, after talking to you, I am I am on the bandwagon. I love Oxygen. I love how you approach the game. I love your mentality towards it. I love your respect towards other players and just how you view things and how you carry yourself. And, man, I appreciate you taking the time to do this. It was a lot of fun. Do you have any last words before we all jump out of here? I don't know. Uh, shout out Sad Jr. Yeah. Amazing coach, amazing person. Shout out my teammates. LJ and Toasty, amazing players, amazing people. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Of course, man. Sure. Thank you for thank you for joining us. Shout out to the whole Oxygen squad. Best of luck this weekend, man. That's going to do it for a break check. We'll catch you guys next time.